Hello, everybody. Red Eagle Politics here. Haha, <laughs> psych. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's your Asian man right here. Yes. Hello. Yes. Ni hao. Um, <laughs> but yes, you, you read the title right, folks. Meghan Markle is actually reportedly actually considering running for president for the Democrats. Yes. Meghan Markle. Like the worst possible mix of Jussie Smollett and Kamala Harris that you could possibly get. Yep. Wants to run for president. She has this one interview on Oprah where she honestly, people were saying how like amazing it was. Honestly, I thought it was actually pretty like quite terrible. Uh, as soon as Oprah asked her and grills her about who from the royal family was actually being racist to you, you could she, you could see she immediately froze. Didn't really know how to answer the question. Try, you know, she's out here calling out the royal family and all these people. But then, but then when asked that question, she's like. Well, I, I don't think it would be appropriate to share. Yeah, shut up, Megan. That's because you're lying, okay? You made the whole story up, okay, Megan Smollett. All right, so clearly, if she can't even cover a lie that shallow, that basic, how the hell is she going to lie as a politician? Yeah, I don't think so. And honestly, genuinely, who the hell likes Megan Markle? I mean, seriously, who? I saw a, a poll today out of, I think it was called the Morning C Consult. That said that apparently uh, Meghan Markle has a 67% approval rating in the United States. Yeah, who the hell believes that? Like, yeah, it's, it's no surprising that Oprah's base, you know, the woke liberal suburban housewives who watch the view all day and, you know, st nonsense like that. Yeah, it's not surprising that they absolutely stand Meghan Markle as their queen. But who outside of Meghan Markle actually likes her, okay? She has this one interview on Oprah, gets some positive comments on Twitter from the liberal suburban housewives, and all of a sudden she thinks she can run for president? Yeah, no. Um, now, apparently her approval rating in the UK, in Britain, is actually 31%. And to be quite frank with you, I think that's pretty much accurate in the United States as well. Yes, I know on one hand, you know, she has a feud with the royal family of Britain. So obviously, you know, she's going to be less popular in the country that that is the home to the monarchy too. Like I understand that aspect, but I think there's also the aspect of Britain is far more woke and far more liberal than the population of the United States. So I think there's a little bit of a trade-off there. And I think overall, if you were to somehow calculate her real approval rating in the United States, I don't think it would be much different from her approval rating in the United Kingdom. Okay. And so with that being said, Let's hypothetically say, uh, just, for, just for the fun of it, okay, let's hypothetically say that she does end up running for president in 2024 for the Democrats. And let's just say that the Republican, and, and, you know, since she, I guess, is a new figure that assumes that Biden would be, you know, retiring, stepping down, then let's assume that Trump, you know, the also the other, like, old guard figure also doesn't run and we put in the new guard in there, right? So it's, it's a new guard versus new guard. And in that case, uh, folks, I I'm, I'm sorry to my, well, what about Ted Cruz, people? What about Christy Nome? Like, what, ab what about my favorite candidate? Yeah, okay, I don't care. Silence, okay, be quiet. We all know that Ron DeSantis, if Trump doesn't run, Ron DeSantis is going to be the Republican nominee. And I don't want to hear it, okay? I don't want to hear it from you, from you Noam supporters or you Cruz supporters or Rand Paul, whoever. He's going to be the nominee. And as, as I've said a few times, I think in the general election, he is a very solid candidate. I, I've said in the general election, he probably, electorally speaking, would uh, outpace Trump by a few points here and there. I think he's a very solid candidate. I think he's the, the best possible candidate of the, of the you know, Currently, we see ones that would actually be electable in a general election. And as I've said, I really don't consider Meghan Markle to be popular at all. Like, I seriously think no one likes her. And as she gets on the campaign trail, her her, her pure uh, unlikability is just going to exemplify. Like, she's going to be Hillary Clinton, ex-Jussie Smollett, ex-Kamala uh, Harris on steroids. And so if that's the case, all right. With, that all, with all that being said, okay, with a little bit of introduction, let's break down how I personally think this election would go. All right, and without further ado, let's get started here, folks, and let's start by filling out the safe, reliable states for Republicans and Democrats. So obviously, you know, Republicans control all these states uh, up here. We'll worry about the, the, the districts in Nebraska later, but obviously, you know, Republicans control here, despite what the Lincoln Project is trying to say, whatever nonsense it is here, they're trying to spew out. No, Missouri is not a swing state, even in the slightest. Okay, so Missouri, again, solid red column. Uh, and all these states, obviously, you guys know the drill, South Carolina, Alaska, right, Indiana. And uh, yeah, I believe that that should be it, right? Yeah, that looks good to me. Okay, and then let's fill out the safely Democrat states. Obviously, you have the People's Republic of the West Coast, uh, New York, 
Vermont, basically all these states up here except the main second district and um, New Hampshire are safe blue states, I, I would say. So we'll fill that out. Even with a crappy candidate, unfortunately, even with a crappy candidate like Meghan Markle and a strong Republican like Ron DeSantis, I still don't think at this point Republicans have much of a chance at all in the state of Virginia, even with that being said. So I'm, I felt Virginia still as solid blue, safe blue. Obviously, you have Illinois, safe blue state, and Maine minus the second district, um, solid blue. And that, that that looks good to me, right? Am I missing anywhere? Oh, Colorado, yeah. I'll, I mean, you know, Colorado it, it used to be a bit of a swing state. I guess it is kind of a state that if, if Republicans have a really good year, they could make a play for. But I think even on a year like this, that favor uh, would favor Republicans strongly. Still don't really think that'd be happening. I'll put Colorado as solid blue. And this looks good to me, I believe. Am I missing anywhere? I think, yeah, this looks good. Okay. Oh, uh, Hawaii. That's what I was missing. Okay. All right. Now, with that being said, let's start filling out these states that are like sort of lean, swing, toss up, whatever it is. And we'll start with the state of Iowa. I left Iowa blank because I guess it is a state that sometimes can get a little bit close, right? It is a state that uh, Trump made it. Some people were saying Trump was going to lose in 2020. Yeah, the, the idiots they were. Uh, and so just for the just just for the, the technical classification that Iowa still can sometimes be a swing state, uh, I left Iowa blank. But really, realistically speaking, no, I, especially on a year with, a, again, a strong Republican candidate and a weak Democratic candidate. That's a hard no for me. Iowa is a safe red state, in my opinion. Um, next up, we're going to just swing around here. We'll, we'll go to Ron DeSantis' home state of Florida. Again, home state. That should be a dead giveaway. OK, I, I already think. DeSantis wins Florida by a pretty solid margin. Not really a state he's going to have to worry much about. Um, 58% approval rating currently in the state of Florida. Governor of Florida, right? That, that that's an e that's a that gives you an easy path to victory as it is in Florida. Obviously, a state that's just been trending more and more Republican, but also consider the fact that Meghan Markle sucks and is annoying and is you know basically the embodiment of Hollywood California liberal elites. I'm not sure that'll go over too well uh, in the state of Florida, and I'm not sure that'll go over too well in the state of Texas either. Which I will also I I I'll, I would say likely, but I'll I'll play it safe and say it leans Republican. Obviously. You have some very concerning trends, I think, for Republicans in the Dallas suburbs. At the same time, you have some positive trends down with the Latinos in South Texas. But I do think it is a state that Republicans are favored in general to hold in 2024. But I think especially you have a strong candidate like DeSantis, who I think will do probably a little bit better than Trump in suburbs in general. Uh, but also consider the fact that Texas, the I'm not sure how well uh, uh, elitist, annoying Hollywood liberal is going to go how well that's going to go over in the state of Texas, quite frankly. And so I'll put Texas as a, a lean Republican state um, for now. I also think I know Arizona and Georgia, we see some concerning trends there. But I think in this hypothetical election with these given candidates, I think these are also going to be lean Republican states. Obviously, states that are not going to be a cakewalk, not free giveaways. But again, strong Republican, very weak Democrat, in my opinion. I'm going to say they lean, and I'm also going to say that North Carolina uh, leans as well in this scenario, right? Yeah, I think overall South Carolina, no, I mean, sorry, not, did I say South Carolina? I mean, North Carolina, my bad, North Carolina uh, leans red as well. Now, as you can see, this puts Republicans pretty close to 270. So let's, let's see what else we got here. Oh, a state I forgot, the state of Ohio. Okay, folks, Ohio. I'm going to put it as likely. I honestly think it might be go, end up being safe, but I'll put it as a likely margin. This is a state that really generally used to be more of a swing state sort of, but more Republican leaning. But in recent years, Republicans are taking this state currently by like plus eight folks. Okay. And especially again, you have a strong Republican candidate like DeSantis and a, an annoying Californian in Meghan Markle. Yeah. Not a state that I really think, uh, you know, Democrats have much of a shot at. And as you can see, 264. So, so you know, this put, this puts us really close to 270. I'm also going to say because it is a favorable year for uh, Republicans, we'll give the main second district to DeSantis as well. My bad. I didn't mean to do that. That was hold on. Wait, I, I accidentally did this wrong. Okay, I meant Maine second district, not the state of Maine. Okay, that that was that was my bad. Okay, so this you can see with the new electoral redistricting, 
you know, based on like a lot of states like Texas and Florida actually gaining population. This puts DeSantis very, very close to 270. Basically, all he's going to need is one more state. And before we look at the Rust Belt in, in the middle, these other Midwestern states, folks, that's actually I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go a little bit bold here. I'm going to say that DeSantis actually takes Nevada by a tilt margin, which will put him over the needed measurement for 270. Reasons for this. Uh, you know, obviously, Nevada is a state. It's been trending a little bit more to the right in, in recent cycles, right? It is a, a state that Republicans are starting to gain a little bit of ground in. Obviously, used to be a little bit more of a swing state, then was trended a little more blue. Now you see it trending a little bit more back red. But I'm 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 my basis for this mainly is the fact that the Democratic Party of Nevada is basically a disaster right now. It's in shambles. They've elected a lot of far left progressives and socialists to leadership positions there. It's not going to go over well with a very moderate electorate in the state of Nevada. Um, even, you know, you have a progressive base there, but you also have a lot of moderates that I think that's going to be turned off by all that and, and just a disastrous party, current state of the party in Nevada. Uh, I'm going to put Nevada as a tilt Republican state that can change, but it's so long as the, 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 the Democratic Party there is in shambles, and so long as Meghan Markle continues to be annoying and terrible, we'll give Nevada to Ron DeSantis, which obviously already puts Big Ron at 270, folks. So we have won the election, and we are not even done yet. Um, and like I said, we are not done yet. I'm going to also give Wisconsin to uh, – to, hold on. I'll, I'll actually put it by a – by a, a lean margin, okay? Maybe, maybe that's a little bit too much. It was obviously always a close state, but I think Wisconsin, I think, is overall probably going to be a state that you know it starts to trend a little bit more red. The whole the whole Midwest is basically trending a little bit more red, but I think on a favorable Republican year like this, we'll give Wisconsin to DeSantis. I'll say Pennsylvania. We'll say it tilts red, and we'll say Michigan tilts red as well. Again, folks, you know, you talk about the, this this Rust Belt class, you know, working class union folk. Okay, folks, you, how well does Meghan Markle genuinely go over well with the working class? Okay, Joe Biden, to give him credit, at least he sometimes made somewhat of a good effort in 2020 of, of appearing to be middle class Joe when he really wasn't. Meghan Markle is not even going to be able to, 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 to remotely even come close to succeeding. She's going to be like Hillary Clinton, but worse. And frankly, it's really just not going to go over well with the, the, the working class and the base that needs to be won there. So I'm going to say Pennsylvania and Michigan go at least at the very least they're going to go tilt republican in my opinion so you're, you're looking now to santis at 315 this is a sizable victory here i mean by modern electoral standards you're basically talking about nearing landslide margins um and again new hampshire is kind of a weird state you really never know how it's going to go but just following the trends you're seeing in the rest of the country uh, per this hypothetical election, I think it wouldn't make too it wouldn't be too ridiculous to say New Hampshire also goes red. Now the only two states we have left to fill out now are New Mexico and Minnesota. If you see DeSantis picking off these states in the Midwest here, he does have a good shot at Minnesota. However, it is Minnesota, so you really just never know. Like it, it, it Minnesota is a very tough state to crack. So for that reason. I, I will just give Minnesota by a slightly tilt margin to Meghan Markle here. But honestly, honestly, folks, I'm not that I wouldn't be that confident even in Minnesota if I were the Democrats. That's not a, that's not a, that's not a strong prediction there that I would that would I would be making. Um, and I'll do the same with New Mexico, which is another state that Biden's uh, uh, energy policy is killing. So I, by, by me putting them as tilt uh, Democrat, don't don't think for a minute that means remotely. That the, the that Republicans don't have a shot at these these states in an election like this, which they do. Um, but there you have it, folks. So there you have it. I have Ron DeSantis right filling everything right. Yeah, I have Ron DeSantis winning this hypothetical election by projected margin of three hundred nineteen to two hundred nineteen. By modern standards, this is basically a blowout. Okay. Long story short, folks, Meghan Markle sucks, and Ron DeSantis is a great candidate. So please, people talk about Meghan Markle running in 2024. On behalf of the Republican Party, I would like to formally endorse Meghan Markle for the Democrats, okay? She would be a great candidate, okay? Please, please run Meghan Markle, folks. Uh, but there you go. And I know what people are going to say. They're going to say, well, Vince, what about mail-in voting? What about HR1? I think even with that considered, okay, even with that considered, uh, Republicans would win in, in this case, right? Because Meghan Markle is such a bad candidate. Republicans would win by such a big margin that it doesn't even matter. And shoot, maybe uh, mail-in voting and the, the disastrous voting system in Nevada, you know, 
ends up flipping Nevada for Meghan Markle. Still, it really doesn't matter. DeSantis still wins by a big margin. And I think, you know, let's say Trump is a nominee. I think Trump would also blow out uh, Meghan Markle. Maybe runs by a, a few points behind DeSantis, maybe wins, maybe loses a state that DeSantis would have won, like, uh, I don't know, New Hampshire or Michigan or something. But it doesn't really matter. Again, still. It, it, I, I don't. I don't think it really matters who the Republican is. Meghan Markle would get destroyed in the general election, and that's just my opinion. Okay, thirty-one percent approval rating, folks. Okay, and, and I know it's the UK, but I don't. I personally don't think it's much different. An accurate one is much different in the United States. So there you have it, folks. There you have it. Uh, election prediction. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, and until next time, remember, folks, alpha moves only. Be sure to like and subscribe to join the Vince Dow Empire. And peace. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe and be sure to click some of the stuff on my left for some more awesome content. Also, to follow me on social media, check out my podcast and some more awesome stuff, be sure to check out the links down in my description. All right, peace.